Hello and welcome. I am here with a new problem in linear programming and that is formulation of a linear programming problem. That means how to convert or how to formulate a linear programming problem from a managerial or real life problem. The problem is ABC manufacturing company manufactures products A, B and C which have profit contributions per unit of rupees 15, rupees 40 and rupees 60 respectively. The weekly minimum production requirements are 25 units for product A, 130 units for product B and 55 units for product C. Each type of product requires a certain amount of time for the manufacturing of the component parts for assembly and for packing. Specifically, a dozen units of product A require 4 hours for manufacturing, 3 hours for assembling and 1 hour for packing. A dozen units, that is not per unit, dozen means 12 units. So 12 units of product A require 4 hours for manufacturing, 3 hours for assembling and 1 hour for packing. That will be the interpretation. The corresponding figures for a dozen units of product B are 2.5, 4 and 2 and for a dozen units of product C are 6, 9 and 4. During the forthcoming week, the company has available 130 hours of manufacturing. 170 hours of assembly and 52 hours of packing time. Formulate this problem as an LP model so as to maximize the total profit to the company. So it is very clear from the last sentence that this is a maximization linear programming problem or a maximization problem. Now the first of all to formulate an LPP we should have these three things very clear in our mind. Before formulation, we should have these three things very clear. So, I always insist or suggest to show all these things as a part of working, not before writing the final linear programming model. First is decision variable. How many and which are the decision variables? To understand this thing as a student who study or who is facing this chapter for the very first time. See the last sentence. Formulate this problem as an LP model so as to maximize the total profit to the company. That means we want to maximize the profit. That is objective. Now from where we are earning the profit? by selling or rather by manufacturing and selling three products. So these three products are decision variable. Our actual problem is how many units of these three products should be manufactured and sold so as to earn a maximum possible amount of profit. So ultimately what type of decision we are going to take? how many units of each product should be manufactured and sold. So at the time or in our decision, these three products are in the center. So these three products become the decision variable. So we can say that there are three decision variables and they are products A, B and C. Now what is the objective? The objective is to maximize what is to maximize total profit. What is the information regarding profit with us? It is A, B and C giving profit contribution of rupees 15, 40 and 60 respectively per unit. See the first sentence. Products A, B and C which have profit contribution uh, 
per unit of rupees 15, rupees 40 and 60. Rupees 15 per unit, rupees 40 per unit and rupees 60 per unit. My dear, this is the information of profit contribution per unit. But we always want to maximize the total amount of profit. That means this per unit into number of units which we are going to suggest after solving the linear programming problem. Of course, we are not going to solve this problem. In this lecture, we are just going to formulate the problem. But if that formulated problem is solved, we will have the number of units of A, B and C that must be manufactured and sold to earn a say rather maximum possible profit. Now which are the constraints? Carefully read the question and after reading it must be clear that in this particular case there are four types of constraints. The first is in the second sentence. The weekly minimum production requirements are 25 units for model A, 130 units for model B and 55 units for model C or other product C. So, we can say that first constraint is minimum production that is in units. Okay, minimum means it is mandatory to manufacture this much number of units every week because this is weekly and there are 25 for product A 130 for product B and 55 for product C there is nothing like availability so far as this constraint is concerned because we must manufacture this much number of units every week. Maybe it is due to any commitment or anything like that. The second constraint. Each type of product requires a certain amount of time for the manufacturing of the component parts for assembling and for packing that means time for these three process is actually to be considered as constraint specifically a dozen units of model a dozen unit of product A require 4 hours for manufacturing 3 hours for assembling and 1 hour for packing so there are manufacturing hours Assembling us and packing us. These three should be treated as constraint. In case of A, A require four hours for manufacturing. These are per dozen. Four, three, and one. For A only. The corresponding figures for a dozen units of product B are 2.5, 4 and 2. For B they are 2.5, 4 and 2. And for a dozen units of product C are 6, 9 and 4. 6, 9 and 4. These are per dozen. In this much hours, process on 12 units can be completed per dozen units. Now what is the availability? During the forthcoming week, the company has available 130 hours of manufacturing. 130 hours. Similarly, the question again says, 170 hours of assembly and 52 hours of packing. I prefer that you also write this so that whenever you refer to this solution all the things can be very clear in your mind 
and I suggest repeatedly to do all these problems in your own and again I suggest that first watch the entire video lecture without writing anything try to understand and learn everything which I write and explain and then after watching the entire video lecture you try to solve the problem in your own on the basis of your understanding which you gathered on watching this lecture this is my humble suggestion to study through video lectures or particularly through my video lectures thank you yes now the things are very clear there are three decision variables the profit margin is readily available so there is no working note and these four are constraint but the important thing is these three are individual constraints so we will have to write three different inequalities from this single information because we cannot form any single equation of minimum production requirement of three products so one two three four five and six we are going to write six inequalities as a part of LPP but now what is the exact thing how many units of A, B and C should be produced to earn maximum possible total profit so first of all let the number of units of the three products to be manufactured as under product A x1 units B x2 units and C x3 units to maximize total profit and that will be 15 units 15 rupees per unit into x1 units so 15 x1 that will be the total profit from production and sale of a similarly 40 x2 will be the amount of total profit from b and 60 x3 will be the total profit from C and the grand total of these three will be the total profit available to the firm on selling this much units. But this is conditional, subject to the following constraints. The first three constraints on minimum production quantity. Minimum production. Keep the word minimum in your mind. Minimum, this much production must be there. Minimum production of A is 25 units. So the value of X1 must be greater than or equal to 25. At least 25 units are to be manufactured. Similarly for B it is 130. So X2 greater than or equal to 130. And C is 55. So X3 will be greater than or equal to 55. Now manufacturing hours. That will be the next constraint. In case of production of one dozen of A. That means 12 units of A. 4 hours. So that will be 4 by 12. For one unit. Into number of units. Similarly. 2.5 hours for per dozen of B. I would prefer 5 by 24 instead of 2.5 by 12. This is nothing 2.5 by 12. That is per unit rate of manufacturing time and H2 number of units. Similarly, 6 by 12 will be the time per unit for C and X3 number of units. And maximum available hours are 130. 
That means we have to use sign less than or equal to 3 because on 130 hours are available. Beyond 130, nothing is available. That means either we can use all 130 hours or less than 130. So now the sign will be less than or equal to 130. Particularly in case of, not every time, but mostly in case of maximization problem, the constraints have their availability. And when there is matter of availability, sign will be less than or equal to. In case of, mostly in case of maximization problem, instead of availability, there will be requirement. And that will be expressed in greater than or equal to. But that is another thing. Similarly, assembling us. Again per dozen, so these three will be divided by 12 to get the per unit time and will be multiplied by respective number of units. 3 by 12 into x1 units plus 4 by 12 into x2 units plus 9 by 12 into x3 units less than or equal to again 170 because 170 hours available. We cannot use more than 170 hours or we can use 170 or less than 170 hours. And the last is packing time or packing hours. You can use the word time also. 1 upon 12 per unit into x1 units plus 2 upon 12 time per unit into x2 units plus 4 upon 12 time per unit into x3 units less than or equal to 52 because for packing only 52 hours are available. Either we can use all 52 hours or less than that. And the last is non-negativity. The value of x1, x2 and x3 can never be negative. Either don't produce anything, that means zero level of production or produce so and so, that means positive number of units. So all three, x1, x2 and x3 are non-negative. So this is the formulation of the problem as a linear programming problem. That's it. Thank you.